slide through. like i feel like everything she already talks about is super aligned with everything that we uh, already talk about because mm-hmm. sonia we talk a lot about you know the taboo topics and whatnot and i mean we, we love it because it seems like a lot of people they're you know kind of afraid almost to talk about the taboo things in life and especially sex you know mm-hmm. and to see that you're on tiktok and you're just over there doing the sex facts and you know, being open about it, it seems like people are just all out eating it up right now. Yeah, it's been doing really well. I'm all about the taboo topics and I want to destigmatize a lot of things that have been stigmatized. I don't believe in shaming people for just their human responses. Like sex is natural. We all have sex. We're here because of sex. And it's something that I started getting passionate about about like 10 months ago. And yeah, it's I love talking about it. And my, the fav- my favorite part about talking about it on TikTok is the feedback I've been getting has mm-hmm. been really nice. A lot of people comment on my videos saying, like, I've learned so much from you. My husband and I or my wife and I watch your content and you've really improved my life in so many ways. Like that makes me feel good. It like warms my heart, you know? <laughs> you know, you know what I've realized is the things that do the best on the internet is the the kind of content that people can find and find a breath of fresh air in and a lot of times it's the taboo content because people go looking for the things that they could learn from you know or if they're experiencing some kind of some kind of uh, issue or if they're having a fetish or whatever it is that's coming on you know lighting up the the sparks in their brain they go to the internet they go to google or now they're going to TikTok and, you know, they're typing in keywords, tags and everything. And it seems like the things that people find a breath of fresh air in is all of the taboo topics. So, you know, <clears throat> I don't, I'm pretty sure like the way that I came across your TikTok was potentially by looking up things that are almost in line with some of the content that me and Estella have been putting out. And somehow your TikTok popped up and that's just how the algorithm works, right? And then when I seen it, I was like, oh my gosh, she's a genius. <laughs> and, and, and then so like, it was it like something that you planned on doing when you went on TikTok and just started posting or it just kind of happened? So basically, here's the rundown. I discovered TikTok like right when, right before COVID started, my friend Vivian told me about it and I automatically got addicted. The algorithm is super smart. It only shows you stuff that you want to see. Like you just, it's just like, they know how to keep people on the app. Let's just Mm -hmm. say that. And the fact that there's so much instant gratification on that app, people can learn things and just crack up hormones get released in a matter of like 15 to 60 seconds. I found that very impressive. So I started doing the thing that most people do. I started like learning how to make videos and obviously COVID being that I had more time on my hands. I was like, I want to start like connecting with people and making people laugh. So I started doing like little skits that people do and like voiceovers and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of like um, single empowerment, like I've been single for a long time, just trying to make people feel better about that. Mm -hmm. And it kind of slippery sloped because I, (laughs) There was something that happened to me like last year uh, before COVID, I was bartending and I I got into this like relationship situation with this guy that wasn't on my level in terms of like good enough at all. Yeah. Um, But, you know, when sometimes when you get intimate with somebody, you start catching feelings for them. And psychologically, I'm able to understand that because of like the research that I've done and looking back at it. I really started like reflecting on myself like this wasn't someone who's like doing anything with their life and he didn't really even treat me well but because we were having sex I caught feelings for him because of hormones and I went to this seminar for my program for credit it was a sex and couples therapy seminar this doctor Tammy Nelson she has like a TED talk out there and a bunch of like books she's she's amazing she's really smart um you know I I look I, I like to listen to her content Dr. Ruth all of that. So I went to the seminar and like the one thing that really popped out to me from that seminar from 2020 was 
when women have sex with men, they catch feelings because serotonin, oxytocin, and vasopressin are three hormones that get released during sex. And it happens for men too, especially like oxytocin and serotonin, but not as much. So there's actually, it's really interesting because hormones are different. And there are different hormones that get released for men that don't get released for women. It's, it's very interesting. And people don't really think about these things. And then it made me think like, oh my God, that's what happened to me. This wasn't someone who's to my standard, but because I had sex with him, I caught feelings for him. I started like envisioning, like, what if he, I was pretty much like falling in love with like the potential of what he could be. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of women do that. A lot of women get into these like relationships, situationships, and then they start like trying to fix a person or thinking like, okay, this potential person, like this would be great if he could change, if he could actually start doing stuff and mm -hmm. they fall in love with these men or more women, of course it could be women too, who are all talk and not actually. So that was like, that really hit home for me. And I kept thinking about it. And as I started getting over him, because he betrayed me, he was like cheating on me with another mm. server. It was disgusting. Like, and the way that I reacted, I'm not proud of because like, I wish that I was stronger, but it made me stronger. Like every, every kind of betrayal does. And I was already making TikTok videos. And then one rainy day, I was like, I should make a video about what happened to me, but just kind of educate people on what happens hormonally when you have sex too quick because like if you are like oh yeah whatever like I just I haven't had sex for a while and you're like dating somebody or you're just like you have a co-worker you know mm -hmm. shouldn't, shouldn't shit what you eat right mm -hmm. but um yeah that and then you have sex with them you honest like you don't even have control at that point because the hormones can make they can kind of brainwash you into thinking like this could be a potential partner um so that's what happened to me so it was called psychology facts about sex part one. And this is my first time I went viral. So like, it felt really good. I got like a million views on that video and I was like, okay, I should just keep talking about sex. And I am a clinical psychology doctorate student, but I, this was when I first started really getting interested in sex research. And I already am very interested in like hormones and the brain and how I, I really under, I really think that when we learn more about our brain and why things are the way they are, why we react to certain circumstances because of psycho psychological reasons or hormonal reasons, it could help protect us. So I was really glad that I made that video because I was looking through the comments and a lot of people were like, oh my God, thank you so much. This is why, this is why I feel addicted to this person. Mm -hmm. And right. people start to understand that, that it's validation. The they can start healing themselves and being like, whoa, take a step back. This is not someone who's compatible with me at all. And I understand why I have feelings for you and I can, yeah. So I pretty much say very quickly in that video, the problem with TikTok is like, I only have 15 to 60 seconds. So I talk really fast, right. but I, I try to, like, I explain to people generally the beginning of the video, what's happening. And I kind of put a little snippet in self-disclosure, like, yeah, I've been through it. I've been there. You're not alone. And yeah. this is how you get over it. Understanding knowledge is power, like doing the research, listening to my videos, listening to other people who've had these self-reflections, like that is the way you can protect yourself from essentially like people that they, they're just not compatible with you. <laughs> yeah. When one door closes, another door opens. Mm -hmm. And yes. it definitely seemed that's what happened with uh, that video right there. Um, you said a you said a key word that I heard you mention oxytocin, right? Mm -hmm. And so that isn't that like the the hormone that, as a matter of fact, I might have learned this from one of your videos. It's a it's the hormone that a baby um, like receives, right? Like when breastfeeding is happening, or is and it the hormone contact. that's released while that's happening? Yeah. So. When a woman is brace breastfeeding her child, oxytocin gets released. It's pretty much, you think of it as like a, a love and bonding hormone. Mm -hmm. It builds trust. So when a woman is breastfeeding her baby, oxytocin gets released. I mean, I'm sure it gets released for the baby too, but like, how are they going to, I feel like it's harder to study. <laughs> um, but for right. women, yeah. I mean, it's just bonding in general, the baby to the mother, the mother to the baby. So when you have sex with, um, let's say you go on a couple dates with a guy, you're not really sure, you're like red flags, he isn't really goal oriented, he's not checking off things on my list. Uh, I haven't had sex for a while, you have sex with him. Um, even though you know, like logically, this mm -hmm. isn't someone who's good for you, the fact that you had sex with him automatically releases oxytocin, which is a trust hormone. You automatically feel safer with that person and then that's when your brain starts telling you things that aren't real. Like, oh, maybe this could be someone good for me 
So it's a trust hormone and it, it could be a little bit scary if you have sex with somebody who's really like toxic and not good for you. And this, this is like why guys are expected to be like the protectors probably, you know, like, cause when they're, you know, you know, having a female produce that, that hormone, she's probably naturally thinking like, okay, this is a protector. And then like when a situation comes about and he doesn't protect, that's probably is like the main thing that's turning her off from him is like, oh, dang my hormones were wrong totally so like guys they don't they don't produce that at all right the oxytocin or no it still gets released um oh. I've, I've done a lot of research and the the one study that i was reading that always pops out to me is vasopressin gets blocked for some reason when a man ejaculates and that that particular research study made me think like okay there are some hormones that get blocked um and there's more of a release of dopamine. Like there's just a difference in hormones. The details of like which hormone or that hormone isn't really that important to me. What's more important to me is the fact that it gets released more for women, which has been proven, uh, which is really interesting. And that is my opinion on why it's, it's more impactful for women. And another like key thing to remember too, when you're not wearing protection, like not wearing a condom, more hormones get released. And I haven't been able to find the specific reason why. I just remember Dr. Tammy Nelson saying that in the seminar. And I think that's also really important to spread that word because like not only are you protecting your body from STTs and unwanted pregnancy, but you're protecting your heart in a sense. I'm thinking maybe it's because of like the skin to skin contact yeah, makes more hormone is. release mm -hmm. um, or maybe something to do with the fluids too. Uh, but I don't, I haven't been able to find a particular study that really like tells you why that happens, yeah. but I'm all about recommending protected sex. And I talk about that all the time in my videos. Um, and I'm going to try yeah. to find something to send you because when I did do, I did a few human sexuality classes, like while I was in college and oxytocin was brought up because that is the skin to skin contact. Like that's why it's so important when babies are born. That's why they put them on their mom's chest. Cause immediately like every human needs the oxytocin to actually thrive. So like there's these orphanages like in China that they call like the dying rooms when there's a unwanted child born, they'll put them there and they'll completely deprive them of skin to skin contact, which then makes them not actually grow and thrive and eventually die like in infancy where's that so, at? like in china it's called the dying rooms you can look it up it's like a real thing um but that's what that's that's that that skin to skin contact the lack of the covering of the thing that's it allows your body to secrete like more and absorb more yeah that's a really good description of why that happens and regardless it's just wear protection especially if it's not somebody that you are sure about and i honestly think too like another issue in society is people having sex too fast which is why this okay. happens so much like the catching feelings for the wrong person thing because you are skipping over the intellectual bonding like let's see if we're compatible and you're going straight to the sex which is making you vulnerable to the hormones maybe this is why guys who are uncircumcised fall in love more than guys who are uncircumcised you just that? Playing everybody. I'm just playing. <laughs> oh, where's that article? <laughs> I need to see the empirical peer reviewed research. <laughs> just kidding, everybody. Just kidding. I, I don't call myself a sex expert because I can't yet. So here's the thing like, I am a clinical psychology doctor student, I have my master's, I don't have a certification in sex but I will, like, I have to get my post master's in sex and then I can call myself a sex therapist once I'm licensed. Mm -hmm. But I by no means call myself a sex expert, but because I'm so passionate about it, I've been researching it. And, and I feel like more me, it's more of me like starting a discussion, like, let's talk about this. And because I think that talking about sex as a society is just going to make us better as a society, it's going to improve our interpersonal relationships, our psychological well being. And I could talk about it for hours, like all of these things that I've learned. But a message that I do want to get out there to people is I'm not doing, I don't do one-on-one -on -one, like sex therapy because I'm not qualified to do that. And there's a big difference between someone who talks about sex and looks up research-based information and starts a discussion and like a sex therapist who offers one-on-one -on -one services, which is something I will do one day. I just, I get a lot of, you know, private messages and emails to my business email, even though that's not what it's for. Like, I have this issue. Can you help me? And I just, I have to either ignore it or be like, I'm sorry, I actually can't offer this personal right. service. Right. I'm, I feel very 
appreciative that you see me in that way in a lot of ways, but um, I had to put like a disclaimer on all my videos. I'm still a student. I'm not a therapist yet. I can't, right. practice, I can't practice without supervision. So that's something I just want to keep pointing out to the public just because like, I, I appreciate that they look at me that way, but that's not something I can give to myself yet. And I'm really looking forward to being able to say like, I'm a sex therapist, but that's not who I am yet. I'm just starting a discussion on it. And I'm doing my dissertation on why we should talk about sex more as a society. So my dissertation is basically going to be interviewing clinical psychologists about, do you talk about sex with your clients? Why or why not? Are you comfortable doing that? And do you feel like, and I feel like a lot of people, therapists, and for example, they avoid sexual topics because they don't feel confident because in my doctorate program, we don't have a human sexuality course. And I've been like teaching myself a lot of stuff on research-based mm -hmm. information, but it is actually really important to building rapport with clients to be able to not be so like squeamish about that topic. And mm -hmm. I think it's really important. So that's something that I'm talking about in my dissertation. And just like the fact that sexual satisfaction is so linked to depression and anxiety. Like if you have low sexual satisfaction, then you're more likely to be anxious, depressed, have not so great interpersonal relationships. Like all of these things are linked so much that I feel like every therapist should feel comfortable talking about it. And if they aren't, then why is that? And all of that. So that's what I'm doing my dissertation on, like a little snippet. I think that it's especially important, the fact that you're out there on TikTok doing it and as a woman doing it, because I think that obviously it's no secret that the U.S. educational system surrounding sex education is a fucking joke, right? Sure. Like, it's a joke. Yeah. It's so um like the the whole abstinence thing it's still like and it's completely like rooted in patriarchy right like it's very like discouraging on women and sexual sexuality and it's it's totally discriminating against women and you know people who are non-binary non-conforming and all these things and so I think that it's really great that you're you haven't you've created a platform big enough to get um, a word out there to to even start the discussions because I think a lot of times like I know myself when I was a teenage girl like nobody talked about it and if they did talk about it it was don't do it if you do especially because I grew up Catholic I was like raised Catholic so you you don't even have sex with yourself because you're going to hell you know what I mean like all these things and I wonder like not I wonder I I know we all know like how much healthier of a society we would be if the information was provided in uh an open non-biased kind of way at a young age like if people were able to have discussions and be comfortable enough to have these discussions at a young age how many little how many young girls wouldn't get assaulted you know what I mean? Like how many young girls wouldn't get uh, groomed and taken advantage of and, and so on and so forth. Like, I just, I feel like, and then how sex is tied to our worth as like humans, right? Like we've had this discussion before because I have been, I'm a female, I've gone on dates, whatever, you know, like how curious men are about our body counts and what that means in terms of our worthiness to be taken seriously or wife material and whatever you know what I mean and some I guys just, like girls with a uh, higher body counts because that might mean that they know what they're doing a little bit more but it's I mean that's what a needle in a haystack, bro. Like, like I mean, I don't know. Sometimes because like some guys guy marry porn recently, stars. You know? Well, sure, but that's a whole other thing. Like, I think right. that uh, the guys who are like in like finding wives in porn industry or stripper industry are respecting the hustle, and, and like they're not even like super caring about what she's got to do to get. There's that group of guys who are like confident and secure, but like most men aren't. I feel like. They're very territorial, possessive, not secure kind of a thing. And then they still subscribe to this patriarchal, like, sex 
you know what I mean? Like that they have been taught, conditioned and brought up um, to believe and follow. And so I think that like, that's why it's always been important for like me and us to like, especially because I have a male co-host and I'm a female. And then the majority of the people who watch this are men demographics wise. And so it's always been really important to me to make sure that like a female voice is heard and it's like, no, 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 actually. And I think it's really cool that you've built this platform to kind of like throw it in there. You know what I mean? Not really throw it in their face because they're kind of looking for it if it's popping up on their shit. But like, it's, it's empowering. Like you said, knowledge is power. It, we're all thinking it. Only some people have the courage and the platforms to say it out loud and apologetically, you know what I mean? And I think it's like really cool that you're doing that because it's something I'm also passionate about. I mean, I'm not trying to be a sex therapist or anything like that, but what I've always believed in is the power of, of conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like, I've always wanted the podcast because I wanted to have conversations say things that I wish people said, you know, from, from at a young age to right now and, and like get those things going. Like, and a lot of people are like, we love your topics, totally relatable. Like all this shit, like people want to hear this stuff. They want to talk about it. So like, I'm happy that people like you exist on these platforms and have you know, a good solid following because it's really important. I agree with you. And thank you for that. I wish that it wasn't so hard recently for me. Honestly, I know you're saying, you said that people are eating this up, but because what I talk about is so taboo, I've been getting a lot of like community guidelines violations and stuff. Shadow bans. I mean, I think honestly, it's, it's so silly because sex talk is important and they even say in the guidelines that we allow sexually explicit content whatever as long as it's for educational or artistic purposes which is exactly what I do Mm -hmm. Um, for my understanding based on the way it happens so randomly I'm pretty sure people are reporting me so it's very likely that there's my I'm popping up because I'm getting bigger I'm popping up on people's pages that are very anti talking about sex whether it's religious reasons or personal reasons or jealousy you know it's so true like I've learned so much from posting on the internet that not only do you have to have thick skin but you have to understand that the more love you hate get the more hate you get and it's also Mm -hmm. whenever you're doing something to try to make a difference especially if you're talking about something controversial or taboo there's gonna be people that are gonna have a problem with what you're doing and I'm so passionate about what I do that I'm gonna continue doing it regardless but if you watch my recent videos versus like (laughs) like last month I can't say vagina I can't say penis I can't say the word sex I can't say vaginal sexual cum sperm like I literally have to use code words so I say taco and burrito for like Mm -hmm. vagina and penis I say eggs like the word eggs instead of sex and I don't write the actual words because that's the only way I can think to protect myself and I've made a backup TikTok I made a backup Instagram because I'm just paranoid because I know that you know there's a, there's a certain amount of violations you can get I don't know how many I just don't want to get kicked off the app and I've just been getting a lot of violations and all of my videos that have over a million views which is like over 10 of them they all have those words in them so those videos are still like in the algorithm. And then I have all these videos that I'm making now where I have to be extra careful. And if I wanted to like repost a video that has over a million views to, cause you know, as content creators, it's actually a strategy. Like if you know that video looks, does well on the algorithm, it's all about getting on the FYP, the for you page, you kind of like use that video like at least three times to kind of just get more people into your content because like clearly you did something right if it got over Mm -hmm. a million views Mm -hmm. so I can't even use those anymore because I'm just anxious like I have videos that I've tried to repost that I posted like two months ago and I'm getting those I'm getting violations on those and they're already on my page and I'm just like what and so there must be people out there who are really just hating on me I don't know what to do about it and another thing about it too like sorry to interrupt like no you're good live on TikTok sometimes and I can't talk about my niche on live. Like I'll get banned for 10 minutes for vlogger content just for saying penis and vagina. I'm like, this is my content. This is my niche. Like I can't even Stop talk about censoring her. Yeah. 
on the same app that I'm going viral for talking about sex facts, like make it make sense. And another thing that really irritates me is like, you guys know TikTok, like WAP, what ass pussy went viral because of TikTok. There's right. the, you know the song Fact by Eminem about sticking a dribble up your butt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that went viral on TikTok. I'm like, how is there Only a song about people ass pussy? Can. <laughs> yeah. And Eminem's song that's really funny and I've always thought it was catchy and hilarious but it's about sticking a gerbil up your butt with a tube like those are going viral and I can't say the word vagina like right no it's absolutely ridiculous I mean (laughs) all of the platforms do it some are a little more extreme than others yeah I gotta say that I think that TikTok is very strict maybe they changed it recently maybe that's why your videos before weren't getting censored so heavily but I mean, we're noobs on TikTok, right? And even yeah. like the like with just our new videos that we uh, been trying to put on TikTok, like I got one that doesn't say anything bad, no words that are out of line, but it was about like robo calls. Like I did a I did like a little TikTok, just you know, kind of just messing around and had no vulgar language, didn't talk about sex, nothing like that. And um, that community guidelines thing came up and said, oh, it's deleted you know, you can appeal it or whatever. And I'm like, what did I, what did I even do for that video to be censored at all? Like this video, like literally it's not even, it's barely even me on there. You know, it's just blast for robo calling you. Yeah. Yeah. So, (laughs) I mean, like maybe TikTok is just like heavily censoring right now, but I, I think that's like one of the biggest issues on social media is that they have the power to like pretty much make you go viral with all of the algorithms and the technology but they also have the power to kind of shut you down. So, you know, it's, I think it's just important to try to get on many, as many social medias as possible, because if you do, you know, anybody, not just us, you know, but if anybody builds a brand on a social media, like it could just be taken away from you just like that out of nowhere. And you won't even mean to, and you could say, Hey, look though, I'm sorry. I won't do it again, but they'll be like, ah, no, sorry. And there's like nobody you could talk to unless you're already a celeb and got, you know, the connects to go and talk to or, or whatever. So, you know, I mean, I just, I, I just think it's crazy. I mean, even like on our platform, <clears throat> I'm, I'm glad that we're talking about this. Cause now I'm like about to get in rant mode right quick. Um, like we'll, we'll do a, a, a guest episode and, you know, we'll be having fun. Cause I mean, it's, most of the guest episodes are just free form conversation. Yeah. Like, you know, we, we talk about like what you do, you know, and everything you got going on, of course, but you know, we also, um, you know, just have fun with it and like YouTube, they'll demonetize the episode so fast. If we say just one thing that it doesn't like, and there's a lot of trigger words, like I could say, something right now that would get this demonetized actually we probably already did but (laughs) like i could say um um wife wife is a um demonetizing word can you believe it wife like husband and wife yep and if there's a certain like connection with words yeah like there's certain words you could say like there's there's a whole list of demonetizing words and like i'll look at some videos that uh remain monetized and like, I'm like, I say so many bad things in this one. And then I like, I'll try to like watch everything I say on an episode and then, you know, it'll get demonetized. I'm like, but then I'll come through and say, fuck and like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I just, I just think it's crazy that social media like tries to censor us so much when it's just the creators being the creators that make the platforms what they truly are, you know? So whatever it is that people make videos about or create whatever content they create and by the way you're a content machine like you posted like three videos before you even came on this podcast right now how do you even find a time to make so much content is just is it just like constant inspiration all day and you just like let me record I (laughs) I have a lot of like notes from sex fact videos and um I honestly batch content like that's what you have to do because I like to post when I, I like to post or make videos when I feel like I look the best and I don't always want to put makeup on. So like, let's say like a day like today where I actually cared, I'll make right. like five to 10 videos in that That's sitting so and, and <laughs> change my shirt. You know? 
it, it's it's definitely like a, a strategy because when you're feeling in a creative mood and like you have that high energy and you're like okay i want to create and you have a whole list of notes right. then you can make a bunch of videos like a lot of my videos the ones that do the best are like 15 seconds which is like really hard because i'm like three sex facts in less than 15 seconds those are the ones that blow up because people are like i have 15 seconds to learn like right. The right. ones that are a minute, they're really hard. Like the first one I ever got viral was a minute long. So I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, yes. But yeah, a lot of them are, but the ones that have been doing well and getting in the millions recently are like in less than 50 right. seconds. So I say yeah. the beginning, like, or I say, and or I'll say something like uh, three sex facts in less than 15 seconds. And the last one's really bizarre. Or the last one is muy importante. Like I just make sure of like, oh, they got to know what the last one is. And that mm -hmm. works. And so I all batch content and then, I'll post like right now about once a day on my actual TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, the ones I'm posting on my backup TikTok are all of my like really good videos from before. So like I'm using reposts. I haven't gotten any violations on my backup TikTok at all. And I'm thinking like, I haven't blown up enough on there to piss people off. Not mm -hmm. only the people that are watching those videos are already my followers who are supporting me. So that makes me think it's definitely people reporting me because I'm not even getting in trouble on my backup TikTok, which only has like 1600 1700 followers at this point because i just sure. mm -hmm. um, so and then ugh, instagram's great because you can say whatever you want um right. so i kind of blow up on reels and those are also like videos i have like hundreds of videos to repost but the problem is i have to fit them into like the time frame of 30 seconds so i basically like i download them without the watermark safe talk there's like this app you can take the tiktok videos take the watermark off upload it onto reels and then try to fit a 30 seconds where it makes sense so I don't cut myself off and then add like a bunch of hashtags and so far so good I haven't blown up on reels I just know it's going to happen because with any social media it's consistency obviously uh, with YouTube it's really hard as I'm sure you guys know to get on the algorithm you have to be like in that for a long time TikTok the great thing about TikTok is like you can go viral very quickly because the algorithm is just like genius. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that platform because I've been able to connect and blow up so quick. Like in terms of getting, getting like half a million followers in less than a year is pretty freaking awesome. And yeah, that's, that's not something you can really do on YouTube unless you do something like, like you're really do something viral. Like crazy, <laughs> like My of life in a van. <laughs> you're like, what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that. But you don't do that, not with educational content. You have to say something that's like extremely mind blowing, like change life change. I mean, it is life changing mm -hmm. what I do, but you know what I mean? Like you have to really build yourself up on YouTube. Um, and I, you know, obviously like being on social media, TikTok has really helped with that. TikTok has helped a lot with my Instagram growth. I, I'm so thankful for TikTok, which is why I'm like so scared about how much trouble I've been having with haters and sensitive people. And I just Religious wish- Religious people, sensitive. <laughs> We live in yeah, weird times. You don't where... let the thing just keep scrolling. Like, why do you have it's to? It's such a hard concept for people. I swear <laughs> to God, it's the hardest concept for people. They, I think people just want to always have some shit to complain about. Mm -hmm. Like, always. misery loves company, I swear to God. And I, I just, I think they need to go play with themselves or they need a hobby. Yeah. They need to, like fucking chill they need to go away just i think a lot of them are jealous so easy you just go like this that's just, it that's all it takes exactly and it's really annoying i think that it's insecurity issues too like people mm -hmm. they feel like they're not fulfilled in their lives and mm -hmm. they don't know how to get out of this like hole that they're in they're like i don't know what to do with my life yeah. but right. someone who's doing something good they see someone who's like rocking on and happy and mm -hmm. they're like fuck that person i'm trying to like ruin their life report like that's what i think it is along mm -hmm. with like the people that are like you can't masturbate because you go to hell like you know yeah it, I, a lot true. of it i think is a religion thing or I like hope a that's not a fact. thing Girl, that's not that. a fact. No, i mean you have to love thyself <laughs> first <Yeah>. that's true <laughs> that's true like come on man i don't have anything against religion at all i just me neither there's, but there's things about religion that when they restrict pleasures from life that's not something i believe in because you know, masturbation has so many health benefits and we're all human and we like masturbating for a reason. <laughs> I, yeah. I, w I wonder if um, at some point it could be bad for guys though, because didn't Tom Green, you're, you remember Tom Green, right? The comedian dude? This is the One Tom Green show. It's yeah. not the Green Tom You don't remember show. Tom Green, Sonia? All right, so Tom Green, he was on MTV, you know, I, I don't know how old you are, but he was on MTV like, I don't know, like 10 probably like 15 probably when i was a kid actually what, what? we were young i think it was in the 90s 
the 90s. Yeah, it was definitely in the 90s. But anyways, I brought him up because they said that he got tes- testicular like tumors or cancer or whatever uh, from masturbating too much. I feel like that would relieve that. I actually have read research studies that show men that masturbate at least three times a week are less likely to get testicular cancer. Is that and right? And I've posted about that before. Yes, it's a fact. I mean, it's not to say that every man that masturbates a lot does, but like Dr. Yeah. Ruth says this, and I want to talk a little about Dr. Ruth, by the way. I don't want to skip that because I- Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. You have time. Dr. Ruth says this too, like- there's no such thing as masturbating too much unless number one, you're in pain or number two, you're addicted and addicted. Mm-hmm. Like the, the whole definition of being addicted to something is when it gets in the way of your interpersonal or occupational functioning. Like if you're masturbating so much that you're like late to work or you're not having sex with your partner or you're neglecting your family, like that's when it's a problem. Or if you're mm-hmm. like doing it in a way that's making you in pain, you might not be like that lubricant. Like there are ways to do it in the wrong way. That's not safe. But as long as you're not, hurting yourself or hurting someone else or addicted to it then there's nothing really wrong with it um i'm sure that there might be some like cases out there of people who masturbate too much that has some kind of negative effect on their health but like overall that's what i've learned is that it's healthy as long until you you know everything in moderation honestly like you can mm-hmm. even drink too much water and get sick you know yeah <laughs> you still got to stay hydrated man did you guys hear about that that uh company real water um, it's like an alkaline company and apparently people who have been drinking that water a lot, they've been getting like liver problems and stuff like that. Crazy, right? That. I yeah. have not heard that. I wonder what the science behind that is actually. Yeah, me too. Me I'll too. Be curious. It's either that they were drinking too much of that water or it was the masturbation. One the I two. feel like sometimes when I drink too much alcohol, if I'm drinking only alkaline water, I feel like it messes with my body's pH like really I yeah I felt that so I like kicked back on alkaline water like I only drink spring water now yeah I don't I don't know too much about all that but I do know that our body's already highly acidic so I don't even know if alkaline water can really balance out what our body already is well if you eat like a really alkaline diet too if you're just doing Mm -hmm. all things alkaline like I feel like like she said, you know, everything in moderation, you you do have to have some kind of balance. So, Sonia, tell me more about uh, Dr. Ruth. Dr. Ruth. So, Dr. Ruth, I'm, I don't, you get, you know who that is, right? Um, I feel like <laughs> I, it's very familiar. So, Dr. Ruth is the most famous sex therapist in the world. She has a documentary on Hulu called Ask Dr. Ruth. She used to have a show. So basically, this woman is incredible. She, I think she's 94 now. She's in her like almost <laughs> mid-90s. And she is actually a Holocaust survivor. Like she lost her whole family to the Holocaust. And long story short, she survived the Holocaust, like got moved out of like Germany at the perfect time to, to survive. She started after the Holocaust ended, she like started a whole family. And then she also, she went to school to get graduate studies in sex and became a sex therapist at a time where it was really taboo to talk about sex. She started this radio show called Sexually Speaking in the eighties, where she, on Sundays, she would answer people's phone calls about sex. And then it blew up. And like, that was like the TikTok back then (laughs) was like actual radio. (laughs) So it was interesting. Like people would call up and be like, why isn't my dick working? And she'd be like, this is why. (laughs) And it turned into like, and she got a lot of uh, backlash obviously, because she was talking about sex in like the eighties and everyone was like, Ooh, you know, but that's why it, it blew up. And she got famous and had her own show she was just on she's been on like Ellen and a bunch of different like shows she's famous people call who her she is now her. yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ruth Westheimer and Westheimer, yeah. uh, fun fact she's actually friends with my uncle she's been friends with my uncle for over 30 years oh, wow. um, right at the beginning of COVID I actually talked to her on the phone <gasps> for 15 minutes because I was like so I started talking about sex um, on TikTok she obviously isn't familiar with the TikTok world but I wanted her advice about becoming a sex therapist and she was like well you should get my book that she just came out with recently called Ask Dr. Ruth. Um, or no, sorry, that's the movie. It's called um, Sex for Dummies, fourth edition, which is a great book. I have it on Audible, so I listen to it sometimes. Um, oh, I love Audible. It's so great, like listening to this like 90 something year old old woman 
who's super adorable. She's like tiny too, like talking about sex. Yeah. I've learned so much from her. Um, we don't agree on a lot of things in terms of like, she's very old fashioned. So she has like different perspectives on like threesomes and polyamory than I do. She thinks you should just be with one person. I'm more of like a this generation perspective, like more right. open-minded. Um, yeah. but she, there's a lot of things I've learned from her. Like she talks about how important it is to cuddle after sex because it acts as foreplay for the next sexual experience. She talks about how women get uh, blue balls too and she named it blue lips, <laughs> um, which is hilarious. I agree with that, to be honest. A 1,000%. There's such thing as blue lips. <laughs> I 1,000% believe it. Yeah, I've it's like, totally experienced it's you, it get it going with a woman or a man and then all of a sudden she doesn't get a chance to orgasm but she's like close to that's it hurts like maybe not as much as it does for men i don't know but it it i'll get i'll be aggravated i'll like, be cranky as I'm hell sorry. yeah I'm mad she's blue so balls cute. doesn't hurt that bad <laughs> like <laughs> blue balls is just a way for a guy to be like i'm frustrated that you didn't allow me to you could argue that it's the same for women too like maybe it's not pain it's just like aggravation it's like, aggravation it's gonna be painful for you because i'm not gonna be happy <laughs> right. it shouldn't happen to anyone i mean it's it's i think it's happened to most people but you know um it almost makes me like want to be alone because like i don't ever blue ball my blue lip myself <laughs> yeah me neither i never let myself down yeah but i've also like been in all these like i'm so happy that I researched this because the male orgasms more prioritized than the female orgasm so like there are many women out there that put up with this and I put up with this like actually having sex with a guy and then when he has his orgasm and ejaculation the sex is over it's like excuse mm -hmm. me like what about me like right <laughs> a lot of women they accept that because society has like you know it's it's actually unfair biologically that the sex the ejaculation happens and then that's when like the reproductive thing happens you know like the fertilized fertilization mm -hmm. but the sex is just as important the pleasure is just as important regardless if you're male or female and i just think it's so frustrating and i i wish i could like go back in time and tell tell some of these guys that i've been with like I mean, I, I'm, I'm bisexual. So like I've had sex with women that's never happened before. It's like almost like a given, like we're going to make each other come. Mm -hmm. so I've been in these like situationships with men or like, I don't know, friends have been and like they come and then that's it. And I'm just, I've accepted that without question. I'm like, what the hell? Like, why was that ever okay? Right. And we go back to these, like these guys, <laughs> like we'll go and do it again. And no, it'll happen it anymore you know for me. If you didn't yeah. actually care to make me come, then- right. Like, but if you care about them, like you said, like women are more emotional and, um, and you will put up with shit and, or, or fall for potential. That's like 100% a thing. And you'll continue to engage with the hopes that something will change. Something's going to give, he's going to do this differently because we talked about it or I said something and he cares about me or he should care about me right because he's having sex with me you know like and, and those are things that we'll do like it's it's not acceptable that's why I'm very anti fake orgasms oh me too do me too. not make him feel like he got you there if he didn't get you there you're not doing yourself a favor at all and you're not doing him any favors because then he's gonna walk around thinking he like he's got it like that when you don't got it like that bro like i promise yeah, guys i'm gonna stand up for us in a minute i'm just letting them you can't there's nothing you can <laughs> how are you gonna stand up for that yeah no it's ridiculous the whole fake orgasm thing and i've definitely talked about this on tiktok many times and the reasoning for it is ridiculous like it's just what are some of the reasons thinking. you've heard well the reason the number one thing that pops out is like a lot of the time the woman wants to make the man feel good like make him feel like he's doing the right thing and but what you're really doing is like teaching them how to not make you come like right and um it's like a I've also heard that like if you're in a married like a lot of married couples like they're just like they didn't really want to have sex they just like pretend to come just, just to, to be over with over with yeah. which is also kind of silly to me um and it's just like this not it's like a lack of communication just because you don't want to be real just because the reality hurts and um I think a lot of the problem too is like a lot of women are just scared to communicate their needs 
because of society and because of what I said before about the male orgasm being prioritized. It's almost like the male thinking that they did a good job is more important than her own satisfaction. Hmm. Yeah. I, well, I, I've talked about that before too. We're not allowed to verbalize what we want or what we like and what we enjoy because that's what we think. How, how do you know you whore? Like, wow. You know, like there's a lot of like, negative connotations to women enjoying sex and knowing what they want and like demanding that like that is what the bare minimum you're gonna give me Mm -hmm. and and then we're like these evil whores you know what I mean like yeah I just don't agree with the whole mentality where it's like if a woman has multiple sexual partners she's all of a sudden a whore but like we all know how it's the exact opposite for men for the most part it's like, oh, he's the man, he's a ladies' man, like he's a pimp. And right. then the woman, it's like, oh, you're a whore. It's like, excuse me, like why? It Who is cares? Or, yeah. or you have sex with 200 guys, your vagina is loose. But I could have sex That's with it. one guy 200 times, but my vagina is not loose. It doesn't get loose. That shit makes sense. It doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, there's different size penises though. So like if she's like with a guy with like a, a huge monster D, then I mean- it might right it has to no so it it can have children yeah yeah so basically like think about it like this Ah. so just i talked about this in my last video three myths about sex because this one's so common but like think about it like when your mouth when you're like eating food and you open up your mouth to eat something and then it goes back that's how the vagina is but also like think about this like a woman who has a baby is having a baby, like a huge baby out of her vagina, it only takes like two days for it to kind of like snap back to what it used to be. So it doesn't actually make sense for like a big penis to loosen a vagina. It's actually a myth, like that doesn't actually happen. Um, I have heard personal friends say that they can tell the difference between like if a woman had had sex recently, like they can feel a looseness. And I haven't been able to find any research that confirms that. I think if that is true, then it's a temporary looseness, but it doesn't make it like permanently loose. Like that's a myth for sure. Cause that, I've done a lot of research on it. That and, um, what was I going to say? We were There's like the roast about- pussy myths also. Yeah. Well, and because the vagina <laughs> swells up to like two or it, it opens up up to like two inches when you're aroused. Mm-hmm. so like it automatically gets wider in there when you're aroused just like labia like some labia lengthen or get swollen when you're aroused and then when you're not it goes back to what yeah. it so what vaginal it, tensing like, or ballooning um right. when, the more you do foreplay and get a woman turned on the more her vagina opens so like if you are with a guy that has a really big penis or you're like you know there's like a really big dildo or whatever the situation is if you, the more horny you are, the less it's gonna hurt. So like some people that have pain during sex, which is like really common for women, Mm -hmm. the more you do foreplay, like even up to 40 minutes sometimes, the less painful it would be. And obviously the more lubrication, if you need lubrication, but um, I call it, I I like to think of it as like warming up the oven, you know? For sure. And foreplay isn't just, you know, cuddling is fellatio. Like that's like, wake up, flirting, talk to me nice. Let's have like respectful conversations, fun conversations. Let's help each other out around the house. Like that's all foreplay. And I was like, I think a lot of men don't get that, you know, like a lot of things. I agree with that. A lot of guys don't like to talk. And I think that's one of like the best, the best things ever is like, what? I think that's false. There's a lot of guys who love to talk, but But I think guys who just want sex from you don't want to talk to you. And that's the problem. Like chicks need to quit having sex with dudes who don't want to, who don't care enough to like put in the effort Mm -hmm. or the time or the consideration to fuck you like properly. You know what I mean? Like, like you shouldn't, I think it's very cowardice of men because like to, to, like they say like women use sex to get love and men use the idea of love to get sex from women, right? And I think that's like one of the most cowardice things like a man could do is to like make a woman feel like she could fall in love with him, that she's safe enough to do so just so he can fuck her. Don't they call those guys womanizers? Well, we call those guys a lot of things. (laughs) (laughs) 
f boy toxic yeah it, it's yeah it's i should have known that guys were gonna get bodied on this episode right here. i don't think it's I, I don't like to say like men be like women be like this i don't like making generalizations mm -hmm. but i do like calling out a certain kind of person that does terrible things and like even those things that you're talking about women do those things too women do it too my first I, I'm not, yeah. relationship was with this uh, Dominican girl. I was 14. She was 18. Like, and I fell in love with her. I thought I did anyways. She was the biggest womanizer like you could ever possibly meet. Like, mm. and this is a woman, you know, I mean, right. maybe she you know, doesn't identify like with, you know, female pronouns at this time. Um, but like, you know, it doesn't matter if you have a penis or vagina, people just suck sometimes like people. Yeah. And honestly, like, I think the biggest like way to summarize it is hurt people hurt people and people who have been through trauma or bad relationships or were neglected. Like I look into attachment theory a lot. It's like a big part of um, me as a therapist. When I talk to my clients is attachment theory is like such a big explanation for why people are so crappy to each other. And I see it all the time with my friends and their toxic relationships. And I like educating people about it because when you understand why people manipulate people and they're hurting people because they were hurt, then it could help you like self-reflect and being out of toxic relationships and attachment theory is so important. Like it, it's crazy. Like pretty much every single person that cheats there, they've been hurt in some kind of way. It's really mind blowing. It <laughs> is. I actually just, um, I've, I, I am was like, um, somewhat familiar with attachment theory just um from school and stuff but then I just recently um listened to have you ever heard of the podcast modern wisdom mm -hmm. um well the guy that does that had a a therapist a psych a psychiatrist on there who specializes more in um evolutionary um like what is it like evolutionary psychology and like a especially when it comes to sex and male and female and why we do the things we do. And he basically was talking about everything comes down to attachment. Like everything we do, like comes down to attachment. And it, it's freaking mind blowing when you like, yeah. when you really learn about like what that is and even just like on the basic level like listen to that shit you have like several epiphanies in your own head you're like mm -hmm. oh like that's wild like that's why I do that and it's true like all of your relationships and your past relationships and your and your relationships with your family your friendships like all kinds of shit dude like mm -hmm. I wait identifying this that and the other like why it, it's it's fucking mind blowing. I like, I encourage everybody listening to this to like check that out or like listen to something about that or read something about that because it's pretty crazy. Word. I'll check it out for sure. Yeah. So, I'll definitely listen to it. It's a podcast, you said? It's a podcast. It was um, an episode on there. I think it, I think it's like episode 313, right? What was this? I showed it to you, Jimmy. Um, it's Perhaps. really, really, really insightful. I, I really love this podcast. I might have or might not have clicked on it. Listen to it. I, I'm very big on like TED Talks and podcasts and just like listening to doctors speak about things. Like it, it really helps me. And I feel like I'm, I'm maturing because like <laughs> I'm so oh. into like these adult things now. And I never used to really like Crazy, listen huh? to so much. But yeah. His name is Adam Gary Lane Smith. The the psychotherapist that he had on there is Adam Lane Smith. It's episode three ten. Okay. Um, I, I don't have to write really down because I'm gonna watch this later anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll really <laughs> enjoy that episode of the podcast for sure. Thank you. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out, and you should definitely both maybe check out that documentary by Dr. Ruth. Another um, sexologist that I'm obsessed with is Sham Booty. Do you guys know Sham Booty? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Shannon Boudram, she, um, I believe she has a master's and she's a sexologist. She has like a really big following on YouTube. And the reason I um, discovered her is because I was live on TikTok and someone was like, your content reminds me a lot of Sham Booty. And I was like, who's that? So I looked it up. She has like 600,000 followers. She has a lot of really good content on like uh, non-monogamy, like open relationships, uh, sex, uh, toxic relationships. Like I have a friend who's in a toxic relationship right now. So I just sent her a bunch of 
her videos. I was like, listen to this is how you get out of it. Um, because I feel like I, that's just so helpful for me if I'm struggling with something. I find other people on YouTube who've struggled with it and like been past it. And then it motivates me to like do better and self-reflect. So right. that's what I'm trying to help someone out with right now using her content. So, oh, you would love Shambooty. Oh, she's great. I have to, I have to look up Sham, Sham, Bo yeah. Shambooty? Or? Shambooty, like booty. <laughs> but oh, booty. Okay. Instagram, it's so smart because like she talks about sex. So like Shambooty, you know? Yeah, so. she's great. And she talked about intermittent reinforcement, which is another video I talked about on TikTok that went viral about how um, the reason that women often feel like they're addicted to somebody who gives them inconsistent attention is because of intermittent reinforcement. So if you're dating a guy who starts giving you attention at first and then takes the attention away, it starts making us like self, it starts making us question our self-worth. Like how come he was giving me all this attention and then pulled it away? It's like, um, there's, it's like slot machines, you know, when you're getting a reward or reward and then it's, it, it's like inconsistent it starts creating an addiction. So nothing creates an addiction like an inconsistent reward. And Sham Booty said it like that. And I was like, oh my God, I need to talk about this. So I talked about it on my TikTok, I went viral. And um, I I love her content because like the way she explains things, like she's just great. And uh, that's a really big psychological thing because if you understand why you're addicted to somebody and then you're like, wait a minute, I only, I'm only addicted to the fact that they're giving me attention inconsistently and it's making mm -hmm. me, like question my self-worth they, they're manipulating you if you see that from a psychological perspective you're like oh okay like i'm not i don't even really like this person i just want the validation and then you're like okay i can self-heal now because i understand that's what social media does to us too with the, the with the algorithms and i sometimes wonder if the reason why they pull back on the algorithm sometimes is just to get you to go harder to pump out more content and then they give it to you again and, and kind of keep you and then they it's keep you coming back. I mean, because they need the content creators to just keep on yeah. creating. So like- I'm addicted to posting on TikTok because it's an inconsistent reward. Like sometimes I'll get a million views. Sometimes I'll get like three. It's so crazy too. Like when you become a content creator, all of a sudden 3000 feels like a flop, but that's 3000 people like looking at your content. I'm like, why does this feel like this? Like this totally feels, there. You know yeah. exactly what I mean. Like you get like, 600 <laughs> views on YouTube and you're like, what? It didn't get a thousand like, views. Like, yeah. It'll be like our worst, like we would, we literally called one of our episodes, uh, the worst, the worst episode yet. And at the time it was like our, our, you know, highest viewed episode. We're like, well, we don't get it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. We're like, how'd that get 50 grand, dude? Like that was literally like, we got off of that episode and we were like, that was trash. Like I'll be surprised if that does anything. And it fucking did like 50 grand or whatever. And we were like, oh, shit. That. Yeah, like yeah. I think my, my best video is does size matter? And I forget how much it has, but it's definitely over 10 K. Does it matter? Does it matter? <laughs> um, so it depends. A lot of women will say size does matter, but the biggest emphasis that I discuss in this video is a lot of women, this is like really important that a lot of people don't know this, but only one third of women in the population can come from the inside like penetration, like from sex. Vaginally. Most of us, my, myself included, come from external stimulation, like the clitoris, you know? The women that come on the inside, like great for them without any touching of the external clitoris, like that's awesome, but it's only like one third of the population. So that makes you think like, if, if you're with a partner, male or female, and they can make you come from like eating you out or fingering you or using a vibrator, incorporating a vibrator during intercourse, then does size really matter? Not really. Like, let's say you have a small penis right. and you're a great lover and you care about your, your female's need, you know, she comes on the outside. If you do like 15, 20 minutes of foreplay, get her warmed up, you eat her out for almost to the point that she's about to come and then you start fucking her, like, mm -hmm. like you're going to be a good lover, you know? You can even use your fingers. You can use other tools in your toolbox. As long as you're making her come, then like, that's great. There are some women out there though that need like a huge penis to, to actually like get to that point. Like I can't even neglect that. That's true. Like I have friends that talk about it and I have friends that squirt from just a dick inside them. Like that's not most of women's experience. So like in the grand schemes of things, no, size doesn't really matter. What matters is open communication, taking care of her needs, knowing how to like eat her pussy if she likes getting her pussy eaten, which most women do. Like that's really what makes a good partner. Like if size mattered, then how come 
like lesbian individuals have more orgasm than straight women. You know right. what I'm saying? I, like I if you think about it from that perspective, it matters sometimes, but majority it doesn't really matter. And like, I emphasize that in the video and I talk about um, like Dr. Ruth's perspective on it. And I put a little snip from little Dickie in there because <laughs> um, he's hilarious. And he went to my high school, um, super funny. Yeah. But I honestly think like, you could be like little Dickie, you can have a small penis and still be a good lover. Um, what if little <laughs> Dickie is actually just straight up uh, s- slaying huge Hi. rod? <laughs> <laughs> He definitely isn't. Like I, I actually appreciate him for being so upfront about his like five inch something penis because it's. Just- I heard that's an average. So we were talking about this because yeah, like, it's like five something. It's like five point three or something. Five point one four. Yeah. Is that, that average? Is- that's average, and I, it blew my mind because I feel like everybody I had been with, for the most part, was like well above that. And I was like, have I just been lucky? Like what's happening here? Well, but you only talk, you only talk to guys over six foot. So that's probably why. That's not always true. I, I do go for a personality. If you're, if you're like five, nine, five, ten. She's a height supremacist. Have, yeah, I'm a height supremacist. I don't, I don't have any shame about guy. it. I like tall guys. So, like I feel like if they can judge me on my boobs, my ass, my skin, anything, then I can judge them on their height. Like it's okay to be a fuck. A bit. I'm shallow AF. I can't even deny it. But. Well, you have to be physically attracted to them if you're eventually gonna have sex with this person or sustain any kind of relationship. That's true. I have to be attracted to you, bro. And if you're not funny or whatever, or if I'm not physically like I need something and a height is always going to be the one thing that number one automatically draws my attention to you. Mm-hmm. But to go on that like size mattering thing, I think shape matters too. Yeah, they say that the girth is more important than the length, which length. I would have to agree with in a lot of ways. Um, but in my overall perspective is if you care to make her come and you know how to make her finish, whether it's with your penis or not, then like you're doing right. And like you can. Well, because I'm someone who it's not just outward outside stimulation. I need that combined with G spot to get there. And Mm -hmm. so if you're someone who's like this, the way that you're going to get me there is probably from behind. Right. Because you'll, because the G spots like up and in in word you know and and for a man who's like this or points upward you're gonna get me there off like me being on top or you being on top those kind I like I I know my body so I try to choose positions based off his shape does that make sense (laughs) yeah no totally are are you two a couple I didn't ask you oh no 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 Okay, like, I'm I'm married actually. He's married. Oh, okay, yeah. never mind. I'm not gonna say what I was about to say then. Never you should mind. say it though. No, you you should say it just for shits and gigs for <laughs> somebody else that's listening. No, I was gonna say like I I was looking at your facial expressions while she was explaining. You just looked very interested in what she was saying. Like <laughs> he he's actually really good about like because I've talked like I said we've talked about sex up all you know just like fucking crazy and. I think Jimmy's really receptive to like um, advice or input or insight of any kind when it comes to these topics because he is married and he wants to, I think, stay married and he wants a happy wife. And like, I don't, I don't doubt that whatever he's doing isn't working for him, but you never know, like any little tip or whatever could like, oh yeah. I mean, I'm totally soaking it in right now. That's why I'm just kind of like listening sitting back listening like I, I love it when we have a guest on and uh Stella and the guest just you know start going going <laughs> back and forth because I'm just like I'm listening to a podcast I'm like you know because I love listening to podcasts and the whole time you both are talking about um the stimulation on outward stimulation inward stimulation I'm thinking to myself wow my wife she gets off from the inside and like the whole time I'm like dang so does this mean like I'm lightweight packing out here like you know what I mean so I'm like questioning myself like okay okay Jimmy okay no I'm playing <laughs> well yeah. kind of he's also very silly yeah I'm 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 pretty silly yeah silly too. I, mean, I mean you guys have seen my TikToks I'm really silly I, I yeah I've noticed that I so, I wanted yeah. to ask you about something actually Sonia <clears throat> 
would you let Oprah, and I'm just playing, I wasn't going to ask you nothing about Oprah. I wanted to ask you about climacophilia. Climacophilia. Yeah. Did I say it wrong? I don't even know. Okay. What is yeah. climacophilia? She had a TikTok about it, and it's uh, about uh, like somebody who's like super into, um, hold on, climacophilia. Hold Erotic on, like. gratification from falling down the stairs. <laughs> oh, it was uh that, that is it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like mm -hmm. so wait, did you say from falling down the stairs? Like they get yeah. off from like punishment type of stuff? Well, well that, that punishment is different, I think, than this climacophilia. Did you were you looking at notes? Did you like take notes on my content? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I should have sent it to you too. Sorry, everybody. I didn't send it to Sonia. Oh, that's okay. I don't, I don't care. Um, yeah, so for a while, I was looking into fetishes. I can't post about them on TikTok anymore because we can't even. Oh, oh we we know. Fetishes, yeah, I yeah. can't talk about fetishes. Like for a while, I was and it was fine. But like ever since, I guess it's like a month ago, I I got like all these violations. I, they even took me off the TikTok Creator Fund. I was like, okay, great. Like I honestly think that they did that on purpose because they were trying to not pay people and not pay me as much. But I don't really right. care. Like I don't even care about the fund as long as I don't lose my account. Like whatever. But yeah, I can't talk about that anymore. Yeah, climacophilia. I was just looking into all these interesting sexual fetishes. And um, one of my best performing video that I put out, like, um, I think it was like two months ago, a month and a half ago or two months ago, is the psychology of fetishes. And it got over 10,000 views, which is really good for me on YouTube. I was like, yes. Uh, but yeah, climacophilia, it's apparently some people get off on the idea or the actual act of falling down the steps which is like, I have to post about this. What this uh, exists? That is wild. Also, melissophilia, which is a fetish for getting stung by bees and wasps. What? That's People interesting. And, and when you say fetish, is that something, is that something that's tied to arousal? So is, uh, is it always tied to arousal? Yeah, or is fetish it is always tied to arousal because that's what turns them on. It's arousal. Uh, something I talk about in the psychology of fetishes video is there's a difference between kinks and fetishes. So like mm -hmm. kinks are sometimes like when you're trying to spice things up in a relationship, you might want to do some kinky stuff, like add some hot wax or handcuffs or, you know, whips and stuff. But uh, that's just like, oh, I want to like do this thing that's out of the ordinary because it's exciting. A fetish is more so you kind of need that to get, to off. get off. So for someone who has a foot fetish, which you're familiar with, yeah. uh, pretty much need feet involved in some sort of way to be aroused and to get to that safety point where they're like, I'm horny and I can ejaculate and stuff. So it's interesting because the fetishes are so interesting to me. And I was trying to figure out like, why is this a thing? Like, what about fetish, what about feet? Could turn someone on. I don't have a foot fetish. More, mostly men do. And if you watch my psychology of fetishes video, which you should, uh, it's actually in the brain, the part of the brain that's responsible for the sensory of genitals, feet and toes are close together. So a lot of men, there's like a cross wiring and then automatically without even any kind of like control over it, feet turn them on and I'm like whoa that's really interesting so I posted about that and it, there's also masochism I made another video about it and mm -hmm. um just because it's just focusing on masochism because a lot of people they're they get off from humiliation or pain and that's also another thing that just like how um a lot of the time it has to do with like maybe there was something that they experienced trauma related and they want and a lot of people who are traumatized they they actually like to re-experience something related to that because that's what they're comfortable with. It's like a comfortable feeling, even though it's like pain and suffering. And another part of that too, is like, if you think about people that like to get humiliated, like there's this show called Bonding on Netflix. It's really funny, um, but there's a lot of like masochism in that and uh, you should watch it. So a lot of people that like to get humiliated and they get turned on by being like, someone being like, you have the tiny penis, ha ha ha, your penis is tiny. I actually have one of those people in my DM. You have one of those? But, yeah, so yeah. basically like, I was looking into that and a lot of men who like to be like humiliated or they like Small to get their humiliation. away from them, a lot of the yeah. time they are like, 
CEOs of companies and they are the boss of a bunch of people. So the reason why it turns them on is because it's like a reversal in the role and it's something that's different than what they're used to, which makes it like this taboo thing that actually turns into arousal. And it's like really interesting. Cool. Yeah. It's really interesting. Cause I, I definitely have had some conversations with some people who have asked me to to if I could do the SPH for them and like tell them SPH? that they have a small dick yeah, my tiny penis yeah and like call them short dick and like all these things like I and I was like, like you have one that, of those uh-huh wow and I feel like that's like super disrespectful like I don't want to say that to you like that doesn't make me feel like good about it doesn't myself, turn you on like, at all probably it doesn't like I'm like a I'm a thank you and please person I'm not a fuck you you have a short dick like I bet you you know what I mean like it's like, a kind of personality to be like a dominatrix right and I, I could be like a stern person but it's like if you're like being nice to me or paying me money like I feel bad saying bad shit to you like <laughs> I don't know it's just what I'm it is not cut out for it myself uh but bonding is a really funny show on Netflix it's about this like it's not realistic at all but it's like the psychology student and her like gay best friend who's a comedian and she's like a dominatrix on the side and he like becomes her assistant and it's really funny because you'll see all these different like portrayals of all these fetishes like there's this one guy who has a fetish for penguins so he likes to be in a penguin suit and mm -hmm. then she'll like dress up as a penguin and then they'll like do all this penguin stuff and he gets off and he'll jerk off while she like hops around like a penguin so it's actually you should watch it the, that episode's only like 20 minutes it's on netflix it's it's oh. i'll check it out it's, it's and of course it's like perfect timing for me to watch this because i'm a psychology student and this is like fetishes that actually exist i mean it's, mm -hmm. it's more of like a comedy than anything else but is is really funny. I've, I've been learning so much about the foot fetish because like you, I, you know, I don't have a foot fetish, but well, I might have one for my wife, like, Lightweight here. but like, I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm open-minded to like hearing about it and, and seeing, or more so just trying to understand what it is about feet that turns some of these guys on. And the more that we did like the foot episode and or the foot episodes that we do on Monday and the more people that come by and are actually open to educating us about it. Um, it it's really like opened my eyes to it and made me want to learn more too about it as well. And like, it's just like, it's like the smell of the foot, I think that really drives Hello. them crazy. It's like something about it, the pheromones, the, the odor from the woman's body that turns the guy on. It's like, like even like the guys that like to smell panties, like, see, I've never understood that. Like, I, I don't want to smell panties because I don't, I just don't, you know what I mean? It's like, that is kind of weird to me, you know, like, and even me saying that right now, we're probably going to get comments like, Oh, why are you saying that's weird? Because that's kind of how we came across the whole foot thing because we, we just spoke about it. And next thing we know, um, we're getting like, you know, people like really angry at us and we kind of, you know, kind of just kept on talking about it or whatever um mm -hmm. but uh yeah I mean I'm I'm just like you in trying to like understand what it is like psychologically first and foremost what it is that drives people to certain fetishes or I like here's another example I got a boy who um actually who is our first slide through um his name is Michael Melgoza and he's into the whole like bondage thing like he likes to you know like you know, get the the swings, the sex swings and whips and things like that. And I, I just, I'm, I try to think it, like, think about doing it myself, you know, and I'm just like, I, I just don't think that would do anything for me or, or dressing up like cosplay and yeah, or, or even role play. Like I would 100% start cracking up, you know, <laughs> if I've dressed in a Fred Flintstone outfit, you know, <laughs> and well, walked in Velma. I'm here, you know, like I, I'll be, I'd start cracking up. Right. To say know? that it's like weird and bizarre is pretty much just saying that it's out of the ordinary. But I, I see people getting sensitive about it. And because my psychology of fetishes video did so well, I had a lot of people in the comments saying like, they were offended a little bit because it's like, I don't know anything about what they've experiencing, but this is just me trying to make sense of it. But like I said before, no matter what, there are gonna be people that are gonna get sensitive and upset about stuff. And 
me calling it bizarre and weird is because it's out of the ordinary. It's not to shame people, but that mm -hmm. is, you know, most people would say, oh, that's weird that people get turned on by bee stings and by falling down the steps. Like it is right. weird. Someone who does get turned on by that might take offense to that, but like, it's just weird because it's out of the ordinary and they, they know that it's out of the ordinary and people are just really sensitive. If I ever got yeah. stung by a bee and got a heart on, I would be mind blown. I'd be like, oh my gosh. I've heard that some people have tried to sting their bees, their sting, sting their bees. They tried to sting their testicles and penises to make them look bigger. What? what the hell? I know. I'm just like, that does not sound safe. <laughs> or no. that sounds really, I mean, people who have melissophilia have probably tried that. I mean, if it does work, it's probably just like temporary and just. And pray to God you're not like allergic. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm actually allergic to bees. So yeah, I'm like mildly allergic. That may not like work out good for me. You better holler at Dr. Miami, guys, if you uh want to get a bigger piece. I don't know if getting stung by carpenter bees will uh help you out there. I That's just why. read about that and I was just like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, like I said, like I the the foot fetish thing came about because I was telling him a story about how, you know, some guy from Dubai, you know, is messaging me about buying foot pictures for me. And I had never heard of that. This was like prior to me even taking any kind of like human sexuality courses before I like really started going to college heavy, like a long time ago. And, and Instagram was new and shit. And, and I didn't know this person. And I told Jimmy, I thought that that was weird. That someone I didn't know halfway across the world is asking me this, but they took it as me telling them that they're weird for having a foot fetish, which it is a very shamed fetish. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, and I feel for them. And that's why I kind of like feel like that's why we've kind of kept up the, the foot cam thing, because I like feel like it helps normalize that I don't have a foot fetish and I don't, I've never been with someone who does have a foot fetish. So like on that sense, it does kind of make me feel like fraudulent in a way, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of a fraud, dude. You know, I'm just showing them my feet. Though, but she tells not. people that, you know, I am. Like I'm really transparent about it. But like, I think part of the why we continued was because to help like normalize it and like to and, and we were learning more about it. And, and I like, you know, learning new shit is my thing, like. Yeah. teach me all the things I want to know all the things but it, it's not forever it's not something that I want to do forever like I that you like use your feet in a way to kind of like bring traction to YouTube which it seems like that's what it is but also to normalize it is like kind of it's kind of similar to how like in my TikTok videos I generally will my videos that do the best are the ones where like I kind of like slide into the camera but I'm showing my whole body and like I'll tuck my shirt into my like bra and I'll show off my stomach and like my, you know, I'll, I'll show my cleavage off because like, yes, I am using my looks and like sexiness and sexual, like, you know, whatever you want to call it. Like I'm mm -hmm. using a little bit of like seduction to bring the attention to my videos. Mm -hmm. But the reason I do that is because this is informative content. That's very important. And it's a strategy. Like I'm using my attractiveness for the good in the same way that you're using your, your feet for the traction because like what you talk about and the kind of conversations you have on your channel is very important just like it's important to me so like I have a strategy that's similar to your strategy and I don't think there's anything wrong with that and you know of course people are going to hate on you for that and they're going to hate on me for like you know maybe some people are going to see it as unprofessional I personally don't care because this is who I am and this is how I present myself and this is how I dress um, of course I can project project portray myself that way like in the educational setting unfortunately but that is who I am and like that I like looking sexy and being pretty so like of course people are going to have trouble problems with that but it's working for us so like screw their opinion honestly and another thing about Dr. Ruth too is she says there's no such thing as normal which I always try to think about because like mm -hmm. it's good to normalize things and destigmatize things but at the same time like that's something you could say to some of your viewers or I could say to your viewers right now like there's no such thing as normal right. because like what is normal? normal? Normal is just like what society has 
like stapled as this is like the way things are. So to tell somebody like, that's weird. I think, like I said before, it's more just like, that's not the general thing that people like to do or people like to, to do in bed. It's different, but. Or that hasn't been my experience kind of a right. thing. It was really, I think more what it says, like for me, like I just, I had no fucking clue, you know, yeah. but you don't a- know anything until you experience it. So yeah. And I just want the whole world to be more open-minded and less judgmental mm-hmm. about it. For sure. for sure. Like, I don't want to stigmatize anyone. And I try to make that as, as like transparent as possible, but while also understanding that like, if I'm going to be on the internet talking about stuff, there's going to be someone who's not going to like the certain way that I said something. So mm-hmm. yeah. Can't, can't win them all. You really can't. It's so hard. And I wish that I didn't say things that people took the wrong way but that's impossible to do it so, really is yeah. can't please everybody you can't please everybody and uh, people say this all the time like my content creator friends like if if you're getting on people's nerves in some ways then you're doing something right because it means you're trying to make a change and people are aren't comfortable with that but I'm comfortable yes. with being the change in society and that's why I'm so passionate about what I do and getting the positive feedback from the people that do like what I do and do benefit from it is kind of like a good motivator for me same. Yeah. I've always been like, I'll be that. Like, call me red man, because I'll be that. Like, I've always been that person in college. I was always the one that like nobody would raise their hand and I'm like, I'm not afraid. Like, I know half of y'all didn't get that shit. Like, excuse me. I need you to break that down. Like, I'm five. Like, uh, hey, I'm I'm with you on that. That is me, <laughs> one thousand percent. And that's what I've always been that person. Just in my friends or my family, like I will speak up. And I've like, done that in my. I've done that in like group settings, like for job interviews where uh, they'll ask you, okay, we need you guys to work as a team and do this. And like, it's something super complicated and everyone's acting like they know what they're doing. And then I go, "Uh, I don't know what the heck is going on. We didn't have enough time to figure this out. And um, for the record, I I never got those jobs that I did that in, but I just didn't want to bullshit. You know what I mean? I wanted to keep it 100. People love like, people care so much about what other people think of them that they don't feel like they can be transparent Mm -hmm. and they're more comfortable in the crowd than standing out. Mm -hmm. I feel like being an educator, I don't like the word influencer really, but like, I guess you could call me that. Um, uh, But being like a content creator on the internet has made me more comfortable with like a lot of things, like expressing myself just feels good too, like to have a, a perspective on something and just share that perspective and then have other people that are like oh my god like I agree with you like that's really validating and it feels really good so that's something that's been really good for me in terms of my own mental health is like bonding with people and teaching people but also like having these really important discussions it's just like we're having right now like it's really good because like we're just getting smarter and more knowledgeable as we do it and we're connecting with others and making a difference so it's like that's so true right path for sure and my, uh, one of my favorite professors, who was my professor in my undergrad, uh, he was my AP evolutionary psychology professors. I had a conversation with him not too long ago, telling him what I do. And he was like, you're, what you're doing is really smart because once you are a therapist with your private practice and you know, you're know you offering sex therapy, like you're already gonna have your clients like a out the door. Clients, yeah. And I was like, yeah, this is so true. This is so smart. You know, there have been people that, don't like what I do, but in the long run, it's going to, I think it's going to pay off that I'm being myself and I'm doing it in a silly way and in a self-disclosing way. Cause a lot of people, like they have to choose between professional and like Cardi B, you know what I mean? Like they have to choose between like who they really are and want to be and like expressing themselves and self-disclosing and being like this rigid person. Like, I don't really agree with that I think that I should be able to educate people and be myself and right. self-disclose and be like oh, yes I'm sexual. this is who I am and I also have experienced these things that you're experiencing and that's why I'm passionate about this and you know if you don't like that then move well, that's along what it is that's what it's about you're coming alongside them you're not coming at them you're not above them like and that's ultimately what's going to help you be really successful in that field because like you're not authoritative you're not like scary or intimidating if they are relating to you they trust you you have this you know they'll be more open to you which will in turn 
make their heal their therapy more like um it's the word I'm looking for effective you know like it's I just I think it's overall just gonna Mm -hmm. be a really good thing for you and I'm glad you do it I'm really happy for you I'm happy that you're here talking to us yeah no this is really yeah I like the free-flowing just like discussion aspect of it rather than just following because I was in um so I just told you how my professor was like, yeah, you're great for doing this. this is great. This is so smart. He actually connected me with one of his other past students who has his podcast on Spotify. And he like, we did this like interview over the phone thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was like questions that he gave me. And it was really fun too. That was actually really awesome. But this is even better. Cause like, I can see you face to face and we're having like all these conversations about things that I'm passionate about. And I, I can't even talk about in some of my lives. <laughs> <laughs> God forbid I say penis on live. Like, I, penis, I, I penis, try to get penis. I try to get Stella to let me uh, make this episode live she was like no absolutely not I was like oh I'll well, ask her first there's reasons why and it's because <laughs> first of all I respect you as a professional so I'm like in case there's too. anything that is said then maybe she's like oh actually let's edit that out and then also our audience they're not always all the time the most respectful people you know so, and i'm not gonna like put up with people disrespecting our guests like, shape up boys tolerate you better shape I up do all the time honestly I, I i go live a lot on this app called vigo live um mm-hmm. and it's been great because i could actually say whatever i want on there um mm-hmm. there's still a lot of like i can't be too sexy in terms of what I'm wearing. I have to be careful with that and some other things, but um, I've been able to like do, I do this thing called sex jeopardy on there where I do like, it's like a sex trivia, but it's with the jeopardy board. Like I made a whole board and everything, but yeah, like I have a bunch of friends that are admins and they have to kick people left and right when I get a lot of viewers. And recently mm-hmm. I've been getting a lot of viewers, uh, which is great. Cause um, you get a lot of money from that. Like there's a lot of gifts. It's like a nice live streaming app for, and then the app pays you when you get a certain amount of gifts, it's like a quota system, mm-hmm. but all over men are just they don't don't know how to talk to women like really at don't. all and I'm sure you get it all the time too but no matter what social media you're on whether it's Instagram TikTok Bego YouTube anything that you're gonna get the people that just don't know how to talk to people like <laughs> it's just don't know how to behave thing. yeah I mean I don't mind that like honestly I'm so and I didn't to- know you you know what I mean like mm-hmm outside of an email chain you know and I'm just like I just don't want to take that chance I just want to make sure she's comfortable this is a safe space you know I'm just like you know I mean if you're down for lives we're down to do whatever you know whatever but um we're 1000% open to opening the platform and like let's let's fucking talk about it like yeah but for this one I I was like "Ah, we're just gonna yeah, no, we could do that in the future. I, I think I need to do more collaborative lives. That's something that I haven't done enough, but I've wanted to. Mm-hmm. And I think it's smart it, like your followers see my followers, my followers see your followers. It's just a yeah, smart thing to do awesome. um, yeah. in terms of like growth, but also getting the word out on like important topics. That'd be sure. nice. 100%. Well, thank you so much, Sonia, for uh, coming on the Cyphering Chronicle slide through. Great. <laughs> to jam out on the way out <laughs> i can't jam out with the music though can you tell everybody uh, where they can find you yeah absolutely so i have uh, a tiktok obviously we've talked about this a lot on mm-hmm. this podcast uh sonia underscore maya that's where my biggest following is i post there daily i also have a backup tiktok but let's just focus on my main accounts because <laughs> there's a lot so there's my tiktok page i also have a youtube channel sonia maya uh s-o-n-y-a-m-a-y-a just like you can see right there hey. post every wednesday uh sex psychology relationships information um all research-based content I also have uh, Bigo Live. This is an app called Bigo. It's like big O, get it? Like big orgasm. Um, so that's how you can remember it or bingo without the N. Uh, Sonia Maya on there as well. Yeah, I love posting content about sex and relationships. I'm on Instagram as well, trying to get blow up on Reels so you could check me out on Reels as well. And get I get her there, guys. Follow. Everybody go follow her oh, yeah. ASAP. Thank and you uh, man, you. thank you once again, Sonia. Super awesome time. Really Don't fun. hang up yet. <laughs> okay, well. We'll talk to you all on Monday. We're out. Side free slide.